Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter. The sixth grade students will be taking orders for spring flower baskets in the vestibule after all Sunday morning masses. Cost is $30 per basket. Baskets will be available for pickup on May 5th and 6th in the multi-purpose room. It's a great way to support our sixth graders. The Knights will be handing out Tootsie Rolls and seeking donations for our local charities which support children and adults with intellectual disabilities. Your support is so appreciated. Join Father Bodine and Father Ben Little today at 12.30 p.m. in St. Peter's Hall as they share their pictures and stories of the Ireland trip. See the bulletin for details on this potluck event. The Easter series with Michael Kapperman continues. Each session has an individual topic, so feel free to come. Monday evening at 7.30 p.m. in the Annex. The National Day of Prayer is Thursday, May 3rd. Father Ben will be joining other area pastors at this event. See the bulletin for more details. Out of respect for the Mass, please silence all cell phones. Thank you. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. The Mass intention today is for James Trainer. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 949. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Number nine, four, nine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we continue in the joy of this Easter season, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. 
not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. 
Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we all shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remain in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes, so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. the branches and he is the vine. As long as we are joined with him, we will develop and produce something of great value. If a Christian separates himself from Jesus, he will simply wither and die. 
This parable that we heard in our gospel today, it's a difficult parable for us, especially in our modern world and with our idea of what freedom is. In the modern world, we're trained to have a right now mentality. Whatever I want, when I want it, right now. I want it right now. As Pope St. John Paul pointed out, our modern man considers freedom to mean independence, the ability to do whatever I want, whenever I want, with no external constraints. There is, of course, some truth to this. In this view of freedom, none of us should try to impose unnecessary restraints on others. Nevertheless, this view of freedom does not get to the heart of what it really means to be a human person. Whose image and likeness are we created in? Who is the vine? And who's the branches? For us as Christians, freedom means becoming the person I was meant to be. What did the Creator create us as human beings to be? A man can say, I earn my money, and I can go spending it any way I wish. If I want to go out gambling, I'm free to go out and gamble. If I want to take drugs, I'm free to take drugs. If I want to watch pornography, I'm free to watch pornography. But that man is not free. That man has become a slave to his own addictions. C.S. Lewis said, we are not made for equality. We are made for obedience and worship of God. Isn't that what the Creator created us for? A branch is not equal to the vine, even though they share a similar nature. A child before and after birth is not equal to his mother, even though they share the same human nature. It's true that as we mature, we achieve a certain degree of independence. Still no, still, no one ever becomes totally independent. The truth is that we realize our true selves. We recognize our deeper dependence on our fellow human beings and upon Christ. Stop and think about it. When we become sick or ill, as a little kid, aren't you dependent upon your mother or father? And as we get older and we come up with some type of illness, aren't we dependent upon others to help to care for us? And don't we turn to God in our need and pray to him, asking him to heal us of whatever disease may be afflicting us? We find a beautiful and powerful representation of this truth in the life of St. Marcellus. Marcellus was a centurion, a Roman soldier, and he worked for the imperial army in ancient Rome during the second half of the third century. He embraced the Catholic faith during one of the calm periods of the storms that went around the Roman Empire at the time. And as he began to live out his faith on a daily basis, he started to notice that things hadn't been the same for him. He began to see clearly the decadence of the normal activities encouraged by pagan Rome culture. The various forms of self-indulgence, of lust, of violence, and gluttony that life in the imperial army tended to encourage and even to promote. It began to bother his conscience. Is this really what I was created for? Is this what I meant to be? Or am I enslaved to these things that are all around me? How could the follower of Christ faithfully, if he continued following the pagan practices all around him, really be a person created for what he was meant to be? In his crisis, it reached a climax one day during a huge feast that was being held in honor of the emperor's birthday. Attendance was required for the officers 
but he became so disgusted at the gross excesses that he publicly renounced his allegiance to the emperor and to his army. He took off his armor, he threw it to the ground and the insignia of his rank, and he walked out. And of course, abandoning one's military allegiance was a capital crime. So the soldiers brought him before the officials and they accused him. And the saint exclaimed, or explained his actions by saying, I serve Jesus Christ, the eternal King, the one in whose image I was created. I will no longer serve your emperor, and I scorn to worship your gods of wood and stone, which are deaf and dumb idols. He had concluded that the requirements of his pagan duties were incompatible with the demands of Christian living. He stopped just talking about it, and he started walking the walk as well. He was put on trial for treason, refused to worship the pagan gods, and of course he was executed as a martyr. But yet he remained a branch attached to the vine. And through his life and through his intercession, he has borne much fruit. How about you and I? Are we remaining attached to that vine? Are we a branch firmly attached to the vine of Jesus Christ? And how much fruit are we going to bear? Are our, our attachments to things of this world holiness bound in slaves, a branch that's withering away. He is the vine. We are the branches. Are we prepared to bear much fruit? And let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in faithful confidence, let us now place our needs before our Heavenly Father. That the Church may be at peace, being built up and walking in fear of the Lord and enjoying the consolation of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of nations and those in public office would be open to the truth and to each other and work together for true justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all of us at St. Peter's Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children receiving their first communion, for those being ordained to the priesthood, and for all those preparing for marriage, that these sacraments may bear abundant fruit in their lives, filling them with great joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may love, not just in word or speech, but in deed and in truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, especially Blake Rabeline, Joanne Jensen, Alan Lightfoot, D. Odegaard, Mary Jane Schmitz, Frank Langer, Charles Terry, Ed Abbott, that God may heal and console them and put gladness into their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may be granted a share in the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you are the vine, we are the branches. Help us to remain faithful to you, that we may bear much fruit. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated for the offertory. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 527. I know that my Redeemer lives, 527.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more glorious when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in our communion hymn number 784. We have been told 784.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave church today, a reminder that there are magazines from the Catholic Center of Excellence known as Cisco. Um, in this particular um, issue, they have an article on St. Peter's School, the addition of our seventh grade. So we invite all of you to take one as you leave church today. Also, to a reminder that Father Ben Little and I will be talking about our trip to Ireland. You are all welcome to join us at 12.30 this afternoon in St. Peter's Hall. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in our recessional hymn number 539. Sing with all the saints in glory, 539.